Hi guys, I'm bringing this long-awaited clone video to you and how I paint clones and how it's a relatively easy process. Now here you see I have a bunch of prime clones uh, from the upgrade pack. I bought three of the clone upgrade pack because I thought it brought a lot of variety and I wanted to have a lot of options to work with. So I have here the specialist, shotgun, or I think DP-23, the leader, and the RP-33 the rocket launcher uh, I did choose to do one of the guys as a normal gun because I really don't see myself needing that many rocket launchers and I wanted more core units so I can build out those units a little bit better now next them I have some of my completed clones so you guys can see the process and how it ends up here at the beginning of the video to see if you want to work with me the whole way now this is a specialized character because I am running what I call Phoenix Company uh, these are a non-canon group that came kind of from the birth of the uh, RPG. My wife wanted to make a clone character and I'm like, well, what if there was female clones? And the idea was that they cloned Bo-Katan, this is actually my wife's character, and they worked with it from there. Let's see, get that a little bit closer to the camera. And you see, it looks pretty good. And this did not take that long, to be honest. So I'll take you through all the steps, even the base and all that, and we'll, we'll, we won't do like the whole paint of every single one, but the generics of it, and uh, like like what I do and in between the steps and all that. I'll also go through all the paints I use as well, and kind of show you like what a normal clone would look like with that same, co with the same concept without the specialized head, and have one of my leaders. We will be doing a mixture of contrast paints, of normal paints, painting methods. I'll take you through the whole shebang and how to make your clone painting a little bit easier for you and manageable. All right, so the first part of this is that main white armor. And to get really good looking armor, I've actually, the process I use is relatively simple. It's Apothecary White. Now, these clones are primed in Wraith Bone from the Citadel line. And then I use the Contrast Man Apothecary White. And you're probably thinking, hey, I've used this stuff before and it doesn't turn out very white. You are kind of correct. It comes out more of a gray. And that's later we'll be picking up the details off the armor. But it gives you that general clean look and it fills in all the recesses a lot easier than we'll be to do to manual shade recess shading. Now, recess shading is great. If you're going for like competition level painting I would probably recommend looking at some like the stormtroop videos that have come out for people and do the same concept for them but just apply it to the clones and uh, but like recess shading all that kind of stuff but I like to make myself a little bit more simple so you're gonna see me here we're not going to la like make the guy completely cover because we want to pick out the armor areas but we do want him to have a general sheen of this apothecary white. And now I use uh, my contrast paints usually right out from the pot. I'll mix it in to thin it down if I want to get more like an ethereal look. But clones are not ethereal. So you're going to shake up your contrast paint. Pop it open. And see, it's already got that gray color. And now, I'm going to just put a little bit. I'm using a monster brush from the Armor Painter line. I think it picks up and holds up a lot of paint. Don't get it all the way on there. And just layer it on. Now it's going to start to pull into areas and and pull on surfaces. And you want to avoid some of that if you can. Like see how it's like that side right there. It's really pulling. We're going to pull that away from it as best we can. Because then it gets like this really, it, then it creates almost like a, um, a glob. Get a little bit more on there. Especially when I want to cover like areas that have like those little like nodules and all that. I suppose you could go in there with like a known aisle and make it real dark, but I want my model to have a consistent look to them. And most clones, their armor belt is also the same color as the rest of them, so we're gonna go over the belt as well. You see, I'm just wiping on there. I go over areas again, make sure there's no pooling on the flat surfaces. Cause if there's that flat surface. It's going to make it look real blotchy and that's going to cause us to do a lot more touch-ups later rather than less cleanups. Now the capes and all that I will go over 
as well. And my guys are, um, again, like I said, they're the Phoenix Company, so it's made over an orangish color. Let's go over his cod piece. And you're probably thinking, well, why didn't I do the black areas first? Well, because this was part of the cleanup. Like, when you do those black areas for the, uh, the Under Armour, it doesn't have to be exactly black, but I'm going to make it black. I think it stands out quite nice, especially against the orange. It doesn't. I don't. It doesn't really matter whether you do it first or second. Let's see, I'm just layering this stuff on. I wipe a little bit off in my palette. And by palette, I mean the pot. It doesn't get the big excess off, but you kind of want it to flow on the model, fill up those cracks and creases. Overall, it's a relatively easy and I don't want to say harmless because there's generally painting doesn't cause you harm. If it does, you you might be painting wrong. Granted, I've uh, building models I've cut off the tip of my finger before, so you know, hey, always cut away from yourselves, kids, guys and gals. Don't be like Sean who never went to Boy Scouts and decided to you know, hey, let's get this really hard part and push the knife back and poop off the top of my thumb went. It's not the best day. It's not a bad day. I mean, actually, no, yeah, it was a bad day, but I've had worse. <laughs> so, getting out of the gun. The gun's up. I was like, hey, Sean, why didn't you do that? Well, because we're going to use Black Templar on that, and any black is going to cover up over this gray real well, so I'm not really concerned. I'm going to mess up the paint job if I put a black on afterwards. I will have to be more careful because that black will overlay my gray much more. But not vice versa. So, so far, like I said, relatively easy. Again, all those pieces is covering it up. Not being too overly aggressive with the brush, but just getting the parts that I need. Little brush strokes here and there. Go for the head. Now, a big thing about contrast, I want everyone to realize, is that the color you paint on is not exactly the color you might get. Now, that makes weird sense, right? Like, well, well then why would you pick it? Because this is a wetter paint, I've noticed it tends to dry a little differently. So, if you overdo areas, it's going to be a lot darker than you really meant it to be. So, the wetness doesn't really help you when you're picking like hey what's this gonna be like when you immediately put the paint on the model so put that first coat on and let it dry to see how it works and then you have a kind of like an idea like okay so this is what it comes out like to with one coat you have more coats it's gonna be a lot different so just be careful all right I'm leaving that shoulder because I'm gonna paint that shoulder a different color so there you have relatively quick and easy the whole model is based in this apothecary white or not the whole model, sorry, but the armor portion of the model, Pothcare White. Just hint some of the areas of the ceiling, you know, maybe give it a little darker. It's already fit into some of the recesses and the shades. Get rid of some of the pooling. A little more on the head. And don't worry, we will go over and make this guy look great. Alright. So now that the uh, Apothecary White has dried, you see you got this like gray layer where a lot of stuff. That's seeped into the recess. I noticed on this guy, his back panel is not as defined as I wanted it to be. So I'm actually going to hit it real quick, shake up that apothecary. And like I said, this is why you know, it's like things will look way darker when it's on the model. So let it dry before doing anything crazy. So I don't want to pull too much, but I want to get into those recesses. Hit the back of his heel a little more. There we go. Don't be afraid to go over stuff. You know, hey, if you say, hey, this is an area that looks good, and you still, you know, it's always my biggest regret is I hit it, I, like, I'll look at an area like, oh, man, I should have taken care of that a long time ago. I couldn't, unfortunately. So now I'll wash off a brush. Shake it. Oh, I'm going to wipe it down with a paper towel. And now, using Black Templar, we're going to go over the binoculars or electro binoculars and the gun. And I said, hey, you have Black Templar, why don't you use it for the black recesses? 
For me, Black Templar is too loose of a, or loose. It flows too well, so I can't control where it goes. It ends up getting on more of the model than I really want it to. So I'd like to use it for just these big areas. Alright, so take that Black Templar. Get a little bit on there. So I wipe the excess off in there. Just be a lot more careful with the Black Templar. Spread it around. So, full disclosure, I love Black Templar. It is one of my favorite contrast paints in this line. It just does so well with its coverage and makes things like it's black is a hard color to paint sometimes to really get that depth involved. Because if you just do a matte black on stuff, that's what it is like matte black. There's no. There's no shading, no value, it's hard to do that with black. So a lot of people start off with dark gray and go up to black. So I'll give GW credit where credit's due. Their Black Templar cuts a lot of that process out. One of the things I as a painter want to work on, I'm learning how to paint black better. That sounds real weird, like, you know, well, how can you paint black better? Well, there's definitely like black clothes don't look completely black so there's ways to do it there we go see this make sure you got all that covered and hey that is pretty much perfect now look at this model right now it obviously there's not going to be no basing and all that but like you can tell that clone armor and with the weapons if you were to just do all the basic basing you could probably take this right onto the battlefield and not have to worry so we're going to close it up, wash off our brush. I basically put my little uh, water can thing here. I'll, I'll probably do a hobby video so one of these days. Like, hey, these are my tools that I use. Clean it off. Now, the next part we're going to work on is his cape. Or, I forgot what it's called in clone terms, but the thing around his legs. The comma, I think it's called a comma, is comma and the under armor parts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to attach him to a citadel post. Like so. Ba -ba. And I'm gonna get out a fine detail brush from Citadel. Pop up on my wet palette. See I already have a little bit of paint on there too. That's from some gold stuff I was doing. I'm going to get matte black from the Armor Painter line. Very good black. Vallejo has a very good black as well. So put a little bit out. Now, it's pretty thick paint. The, um, what's it called? The wet palette is going to, I would say moisturize. Put a little bit in there, but I'm going to add a little dollop of thinner medium from the Vallejo line. Just to get a little bit already nice and flat. So we're going to spin that around, spin, 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 spin. One thing I noticed is that already for me mixing, it flows very well. It flows almost too well because I have a little bit nearing my fennel, which is that middle part. So I'm going to wash that off right now. So you can get on the tip of it. And we're going to just spin it around, tip, spin around, get that point to that thing. Now we're going to go for the black areas. Now, on these clones, paintbrush right there, that is going to be his visor. So we can get in there. Very lightly. Get into that visor area. And see, I got a little bit of black overlap. Now you're like, oh no, how are you going to do that? Because Apothecary White is not going to cover over that. So in retrospect, it's not a bad idea to do this undercoat layer first. But again, like I said, it's not going to matter. If you got that on before or after the Apothecary White, still wouldn't cover it. And just lightly go down. 
Another thing in retrospect is I should have uh, detached the heads. But it's okay. So it's a little thicker than I want. Actually, I'm going to add a little water. Really thin down. That black. And spin. And spin. Because what we're going to do later is we're going to cover all these areas a little bit of white. Or, and not pure white, offset white. So now we're going to get in there. And see with that detail brush, I was kind of able to avoid the edges. And sometimes it doesn't matter too much like you want to create a little depth and shadow so if I get a little bit on like the edge it's looks like a little more shadowed got above the knee got there let's get these arm pieces right there On the arm right here. Back of this joint. Every now and then I'll reapply the paint, but I'll spin and sweep just to make sure I get it. Back of the joint. There we go. To me, this is the most monotonous and like mind-numbing part of painting clones. Because it's all just black. And it's going around all the different areas. Painting the underoos. I'm gonna spin a little more because I'm noticing that the bristles are starting to play out. It's probably it's one of my older detail brushes, I think. So I have some more, but I'm trying. I try to use all my stuff till it's not dead, but like dry brush it. You would prefer to use it for dry brush at a certain point. Alright. So we got the main head details. Got the arm joints. Let's do a little bit more on this it looks like it faded out. There we go. Got the leg joints. Could probably do the feet joints. Head, shoulder, knees and toes, knees and toes. <laughs> Let's get the fingers. Now that should contrast a little bit, and you want to be careful because you got that apothecary white on the fingers already. Ask her. Don't be careful. Let's get them glow that inner glove part. kind of why I say that too is because you know what we'll just dry brush over it gray they have to worry about like pick out each individual piece and that way it'll look different than the, uh, the black templar on the weapons so the gloves on the weapons and all that don't don't just look like another part of the weapon it looks like actual glove Under Armour. Yeah, this brush is on its last leg. I'm noticing more and more stuff. That's okay, though. You can work with anything. You can work with, like, $5 Hobby Lobby brushes. You can work with brushes that are starting to flay. And that joint right, right there. There we go. Get in there. There we go. Alright, so another thing we can do is that these are kind of like ARC Trooper-like. Is that they have these commas on there. And I could have done that in Black Templar. That's probably what I might do for some of the other ones. But we're going to go and paint these commas black. Or no, this is the shoulder powder. We'll paint the edge of the comma black. Just to give it that definition when we go in there with the orangey color. Still using the detail brush because it has decent coverage. 
for a fine for a fine Cheeto brush. I I need to figure out what Citadel's version of fine is because this is almost layer like. Grant, this might actually now that I think about it, this might be one of the brushes I bought when I was in Afghanistan in 2010. So uh, that might be another reason why it's flaying as it is. It's been through war and back. I'm gonna spread that a little bit because we don't want it to be chunky. And people like, hey, if someone tells you thin your paints, guys, for one, be nice about it because, like, hey, it's when people start painting, they don't realize all these. I mean, yeah, people can look up all the videos they want, but some people just want to jump right into the paint part, so they won't like look up the tours. Like, hey, thin down your paints. I mean, I just I just kind of like quickly mentioned it. Hey, guys, thin down your paints. Use water. Water works out just fine. There's mediums, there's glazes you can use. But if you don't strap for gas, just use water. You kind of want to like, I usually like one part for one part is what I generally do. The, uh, what's it called? This wet palette really helps out. But yeah, thin your paints just to make it so it flows better and the paint doesn't come off so chunky on your miniature. Because then it, it, it looks less like a model and it's more like that toy. And if you're going for that toy look, that's fine too. Oh, sorry, I shook the camera a little bit. I just realized I got some black on his helmet more than I wanted to. But again, that's something we'll fix. I think, yeah, this fine detail brush, I'm going to use it for specific projects that are a little bit less messy. So, it's pretty good we got that pauldron black. Now let's do the edge of this and let's let be done with this little brush. Nice, easy sweep. Small parts of this aren't going to show brush strokes. So you can afford to do a little bit longer strokes. Oops, yeah. I have I have a detail or detail brush for, from Army Painter that's a little bit newer right next to me. I'm thinking that's what I'm the next one do next for all the other pieces. But right now, let's just get this done. So I see I got a little bit right there. It might be hot to tell. But I'm gonna go over that in orange later, so it's not that big of a problem. And you could have done the orange first too, which might not be bad because then you don't have to, you have to be this more careful with this black lining than you do the orange part. So if you're going for a fast and easy army, for the parts on the right now, the cape and like the stylized the stylized parts on the edges. I honestly would not blame you if you just did it one color. Like, say we're doing this all in contrast paint, just do the whole cape in a contrast paint. It's not gonna look the best, mind you. But it's not gonna look bad either. It's gonna at least have color on it, and at least signifying like a unit or something. So, like, if you just like did in a dark blue, it'll look pretty good. Like, say you're going for like the five zero first, a dark blue, and then the edges, the edges will be blue too. That's not bad. You don't have to do all this I'm doing right now to make it look battle ready, as Citadel likes to put it. I don't think it just has to be Citadel though. I think battle ready is a good term. I need painter. Here you gotta be real careful. We got these little tiny cords going across. Connecting it. There we go. So we got all the edge pieces out. We got the shoulder pads done. It's actually drying to a nice, nice matte black. We could probably just do a little another layer over here. Alright. So 
blow that dry. So you're gonna say, shake out my brush. I'm actually gonna put this one away. We're gonna work on another one. See if it does better. But what details I have now? I'm trying to get all the base coating done parts before I do like highlighting and bring those area up nice and bright. So I'm gonna work on that cloak now. And then for that, I'm going to use a regiment brush. Mario Painter Regiment. Oh, it's a little bright. These uh, are plastic brush handles or something. So I'm going to use Docaro Orange for the base parts. Hmm. Do I want to use Docaro? Nah, you know what? I think uh, most of you ends up being Wild Rider Red. We're going to use Wild Red. Now it's a layer. So I'm like, hey, that's not exactly your, you know. I was like, you know, the, the pattern, like, do base, then layer, then highlights. But it'll work. So I'll put a little bit on there, spin it around. So these wet palettes give you a lot of water. I'm going to dip my brush into the water and then just add a little more. Spin around more. And spin. And spin. Spin. So for his cape. We just did that black line, so we want to be careful. So we're just going to go. So see, I think even this, this brush is a better point than the last brush. Those edges, just be real careful. In fact, I would recommend, like a puzzle, I mean, I always do puzzles edges first. So do it like that. Just do the edges first. Be real careful. Really careful. Go. Get a little more on the tip of my brush. Wipe it off just to get that point. Did a little bit like that because I know that my brush was pooling a little bit, so it's getting a little bit thicker. This is going to be a tough part getting down that edge, especially with the camera. I can do it. I can do anything you can do. There we go. And then we'll get frame out his tools. Alright. So now that we have that boxed out, it's gonna make it a lot easier to do this part. So now we just happy little strokes. Fill in the whites. Fill in the whites. Little tiny baby strokes. That's one thing like a lot of people do um, is they do a lot of like big strokes with models. You don't really need to because then your sometimes your brush strokes show up. Even like this, I need your brush strokes. So uh, I just recommend just tiny little swipes. And like I said, this could have been done with a contrast paint. The only thing I'm going to say is contrast paint does not do well with flat surfaces. It tends to mess up a little bit more. Alright. And it looks like we got that game mostly done. And what we're going to do is while... We do another layer on it. Like, again, I've... I'm not, I wasn't always the biggest fan of two thin coats, but with layer paints, definitely. And the, and the paint, the colors do show up a lot better when you do two thin coats. So, as that dries, I'm just going to slowly go over the areas again. And why they say two, though, too? Too much, and even if you do thin your paints down, you'll still build up too many layers. Now we're going to use the same Wild Rider Red. Wild Rider Red. Oh, man, that's... So we're going to go over the shoulder pads. Like so. Is that? Get in there, get in there. Perfect. We'll let that dry. Do another layer. And now... We have these shoulder pads. Do 
I'm gonna leave a little black areas in some of them just to kind of donate an edge. This is a little bit tougher, but that's actually why I love these grips because they uh, you control. So we kind of left the edge of that black, and I got a little bit of the layer paint nuts. I'm going to transfer it, so let's run it over a little bit. I'm trying not to get into the recesses either. Alright. So, I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up right there. Uh, you're saying, Sean, hey, that doesn't look the best. Like, yep. Yeah. With brighter paints, paint over black, that multiple layer roll is going to come into very big handy. It's actually an almost must when you're doing multiple layers of a bright color. Because notice, it looks great on the white. Not the best, it's still a little patchy on the white, but it looks great on the white. And the black, you can see a lot more of those layers. A lot more of the black is seeping through. Alright, and while we're at it, before we do the white highlights, I'm going to add some markings to this guy. Do a single orange stripe down the middle. And along, this, then along the middle, I'm going to drag it out. Drag it out. So it curves around the side. To me, the clones had personality, and they decked out their armor a lot. And actually, this is where I'm going to clean up some of that black, because I'm going to put orange markings on the face. There we go. And see, now the visor already looks better, because we cleaned up that black part that went stray a little bit. without adding to, adding to have a white color that might have made it look too bright and shiny in that particular area. Nice and... I don't want to overcomplicate it, so let's do the headpiece. A little crest, I guess I could call it. The crest. Like he's a mighty pterodactyl, and this is his beautiful crest to attract. Or, this is a girl, so... You know what, she can still track mates via whoever she prefers, because clones are whatever. <laughs> Alright, so very simple. We got those oranges. And now we're gonna I'm gonna add a little more water, just a little bit. And we're gonna re-go over these areas just to make that color nice and pronounced. So again the cape, let's hit the main areas. Shoulder pads, focus on the innards. Really get that paint to look smooth. Because you gotta think the more you apply the one color, the more color that is going to appear. So, this is one of those cases I know I said don't do too many thin layers, but with bright colors, you might have to just so that way it looks good on the model. Because sometimes. It's going to come out splotchy like it is right now. And see, I'm already cleaned up. All right, parts are looking much, 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 much better. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to do one little knee pieces. I 
Okay. So, this is actually pretty battle ready. As in, you have color markings. You have the shading into the recesses of the model. I wouldn't be unashamed, I mean, besides the base, to take this onto the battlefield. I mean, there's always a little more stuff we can do to it, like, yeah, clean up this middle line a little bit in that belly there, and you know, maybe do that. There we go. There's more we can do to it, but this is good enough to put on the belly, and it still look good. So what more can we do to this? Well, first thing, keep applying these layers to the shoulders. A lot of that black is still sticking through. Sometimes you can do detail work with thicker brushes. It's just learning to use the point and be control of the brush. Again, I'm not the best painter. I'm a good painter. I'll admit that. I'll let my let my ego let me reach that far. But I hit the camera again. <laughs> but. There's always little things I can improve upon. Alright, so we're going to stop with that. We're going to let that dry come real quick, and then we're going to come back to shading and doing some more of those highlights. Alright, so for some of the highlights we're going to do, we're also do a shade of, what is it called? Karasborg Crimson. Sorry, I forgot to grab that one. There we go. I'm going to do a little bit of Karasborg Crimson on the coat. Maybe a few can order. i got to think about that for a second. But definitely we're going to hit the Lecture Binoculars with a Necron Compound dry brushing. And Othuan Gray, Othuan Gray for the white areas. And you're like, Sean, that's not white. I'm like, I know. You don't want it to be directly white. And it looks, uh, this looks different. The off-white's what you want to go with. So first, I'm going to take a look. I think I am going to do the orange for the shading. So I'm going to put the, I think the, the red's going to be way too red. So I shake up that. Shake it up. Shake, shake, shake it up. <laughs> All right. Pop open the can of shade, or pot of shade, in there, to a medium shade brush. Oh, 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 okay. Calm down that camera. Medium shade, I'm going to wet it up a little bit. It's a medium shade brush from G uh, Citadel. Get down there, get some shade, the cloak, shade the cloak. More orange. You notice it's going to go into the recesses. And what shades do that contrast paints don't is they don't make that model look, the mottled look so bad. Because you notice on the, like, let's say the legs of the, storm, the uh, clone guy, it has like almost a mottled gray effect from the pooling that, I didn't, that maybe I didn't get. So there's a way to do contrast paint where it's great. We're going to push up this shade a little bit. 
I can do a loop on the shoulder, but there's no real contrast on it. Maybe beneath it. So we'll do that. It's almost like a glaze, too, is how you can use it as. You know what? Let's do that. Let's do an orange glaze, is how we'll call it. Now, because that's wet, it's going to take a lot longer to dry. But while we wait for that, we'll do some dry. Dry off my... my uh, shade brush Get my paper towel clean it off all right and then we're gonna dry brush a dry brush is a very good and easy process to do a lot of different things to lightly touch up areas and make it shiny or lightly touch up colors make it brighter so this Necron compound right here is specifically dry. You could use, but the thing is, you can use like any, like say, metallic paint, put it on the brush. And I bought this, so I'm going to use it, is basically what I'm doing. It's messy as I'll get out, but then you just wipe it until there's not as much pigment. And I like to use the back of my hand. It's going to get that last look. So my hand will be, so my going to work a little shiny. As lightly, go over the area. And this nice metally sheen. Unless you're banana, so it looks like a like a like a electric binocular. I'm gonna take a go a more, wipe a little more off. I think I might have gotten bad dry pots at some point, but it's fine. Again, wipe on the back of my hand, just get that little bit of excess. And get the edges of the gun. So again, looks like a metal weapon, but has that dark undertones. So there we go. Weapons dry brush, the binocular dry brush, they have a little bit of orange on it, I realized. And so then we just wash off that dry brush in there. off. And now, we're going to move on to white. And that will be the Ulthalum Gray. So Ulthalum Gray, we're going to shake up real good. I'm going to use my Regiment Brush, which is in my ear. Regiment Brush. I'm put some on my palette. Spin it around. Grab some water, just to thin it down a bit more, and then spin the brush to a point. Look what areas we want, and now we're gonna look for areas we want to be a little bit brighter. So I want his chest piece a little bit brighter. I think I'm a little bit too much on there, so I'm gonna spend a little bit extra. Just gently make part of that chest piece brighter. Avoid the little light spots. There we go. In there, just get rid of that orange. And you want to focus, you know, for highlighting, which is basically what we're doing, you want to focus on the top of things. Things that would catch the light. You can also focus on things you want attention drawn to. For his legs, I'll get the sides a little bit. I just realized I got some on that cloak. Yeah, I gotta get it. I'll have to go over that in black again. Luckily, though, that's still on my palette, which is nice and is easy. Tell that cob you know what? That orange right there that we made the mistake on? It's now white. The 
that black right there that got a little too much. Hey. Now fixed. This mouthpiece that got a little bit too wide. Spin that brush off. And boom. Looks like a normal mouthpiece again. So this is where we're touching up a bunch of things. So you notice I'm holding my hands at very weird angles, and that's for the camera to be honest. Naturally, I just move it where I need it to go. It really helps out. So now I'm working on the head piece a little bit. I'm just going to draw a few little areas. And I want to cover up a lot of the recess shading. Recess shading. Let's get the back of this elbow. That's going to look nice. There you go. Especially because I'm coming up with a mistake I made earlier. And then we're just going to uh, it's actually going to use this to clean up some of that orange. I want to leave a little bit of that recess right there by that film piece, but we're going to get the rest of the helmet. So you're going to leave a little bit of the recess that's like by that thin piece, just to make it seem like it's shaded, and get the rest from there. a little bit the visor very lightly and there you go actually let's clean up the legs a little bit because they look a little pat like they look like I just put Ultha on gray to patch it up they don't look clean so I'm gonna smooth them out a little bit this place in particular it's almost too bright so we gotta get in here with the leg even up the sides a little bit. There you go. You know what? We'll ride it. This part here that the paint pulled. Let's get it across. Like that. There we go. So the paint will dry nice, like off whitey. It's not gonna be like pure white, so it's not gonna stick out. It's gonna look natural to the model. And again, and so you see, I, actually I'm going to my shade brush real quick. I'm going to pull some of that orange off the top. So our, oh, and actually I just noticed on his face I hit it with the black, so we'll spin around, make a good, nice point. So I'll try to do that a little bit to the other side, just so that way it looks even. There we go. So there, that's again. This is an even more battle right. You now you have colors and edging and highlighting. So this model, and said in, in one look, we're basically where I did with these guys. Completed model for the most part. You just gotta do the basing afterwards. And a little touch up, like I'm gonna get that white spot on the cape. And I might do a little highlight to the cape just to make those little wrinkles stand out a bit. All right, so for the last little bits and touches, we're going to do a little highlight of Fire Dragon Bright on some of the shoulder pattern parts and the uh, cloth parts. Let's take that, 
put it there. I'm going to put my wet palette, mix it around. Dip a little bit of water. And mix a little more. And spin, and spin, and spin. So for this guy, I had just like these top parts at the cloth right here. Creases are basically. And in retrospect, I should have. You know what? I'm gonna mix. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little, a little, a little special here. I think I realize it's a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna mix some of the Fire Dragon bright with my uh, Wild Rider Red. That should brighten up the Wild Rider Wild Rider Red I already have. Again, dip it in water, spin it around. I want to get all these brushes. Okay, it's a little more subtle. I like that. So we're just in these tops of these creases, like that'd be a little bit brighter than normal. It's getting caught at the light at the right time. So just a little touch up like that. A little touch up for the uh, crest, make it a little bit brighter at the top. There we go. Alright, I think that's what we want. Maybe. It, ooh. There we go, a little central line. That makes that actually pretty cool. Alright. So now, I'm not going to highlight anymore. We're going to use some texture paint. And by texture paint, I mean. Ta da! Oh. A Ghrelin Earth and Armageddon Dust. Before that, what I wanted to do is get a Steel Legion Lab onto oh, onto the base and rim of this guy, because that's where all the bases and rims are going to be in. And that matters because this A Ghrelin Earth cracks, and when it cracks, the paint below is still there. We're actually going to use a monster brush for this. Take some of that steel leaf and drab. Put it on the palette. Put it in there. Ba -ba, ba -ba. Get a good dollop of water. Spin it around and spin. So, basically, paint down the earth a little bit. So, I want to. I'll talk about an alternative to texture paint. This is something you gotta kind of you gotta fit in your uh, portfolio if you want. Before I started using texture paint, I was using dirt from my backyard. And you're like, how would you use dirt? And well, here's the best way: it's before you prime these guys, you would put the model. You put uh, some PVA glue, which is I think it's like Elmer glue mixed with water to be mo like to be absolutely technical. Some PVA glue and spread it all over the base. Club it if you have to. Just get it all over that gosh darn base. I don't know, hold him by the head now. So you have this PVA glue everywhere, and then you just I basically got a shovel. And shoveled in some dirt into a Ziploc bag, picked out some of the bigger pieces. The bag is still in my drawer right over here, and I use it every now and then. And then I'll just dip the base of the model into the bag. Thus giving me a very nice, very even layer of dirt 
on the model. And I do this before I prime it because then I will prime that dirt. And you're like, why would you prime dirt? Because then you can paint the dirt. And there I'd use like, again, steely drab and dry brush and shades and all that kind of stuff. You still do some of the stuff here with the uh, layer paints, but one thing the layer paints can do, so I've already painted, I painted the base, shake up that agrell on earth. He knows it's real. It's, it's, it's real, it's not gonna show you guys. It's real thick, real thick. So I put some on here. Now I kinda do a two process. I'll put some up the front here. Real nice and thick. And then push it around, or spin around. In between those legs and pull it back so pull it back so and then we're gonna go over and fill in those spots all right and I'm gonna use the smaller end of it to just push that stuff to the edges of the feet don't even want to get any on the feet, because that might defeat the purpose of having like white and all that. So why I look for my dirty? Uh, let me get a new towel out. Oh, there it is. Never mind. So I'm gonna clean off the texture, paint off the brush. Just swipe, swipe. Oh. Now we're getting some of this Armageddon dust. What is the new pot? Let me see if I got an old button. Oh cool, I got some McGrill in Badland, just as good. So we see you got like, just trying to mix up a little bit. Actually, I wanna, let me use a smaller end, take a dab of it. Just grab the Yun's clone and then, boop, put it on. And push that down. Take the, uh, try to cut off. Oh, yeah, luckily it's not paint paint, so it's okay, it won't spill. Cut off the excess, put it over there. So you see, I've made two different textures. On this clone. It's not a, it, it, one of the big thing, it's not going to be that big of a difference. I mean, well, you, you'll see the cracks, but it's not going to draw attention away from the clone. It just makes the setting in he, that he's in look more natural. Because you don't always just see like tufts of grass and all that. I mean, yeah, but it's war, to me, wargaming grass generally looks a little fake. The rocky stuff always looks a little bit better because it looks like you actually stay on different levels of terrain, elevation, and terrain. And you know what? What I like about the this stuff too is that um, you can get a little bit on the boots and all that because then it looks like the boots got dirty. All right, so that takes a while to dry. And so we'll come back after that is all done. Then we will dry brush. We will dry brush. Uh -huh. And you notice that orange just gives that little bit of a highlight to it. I could have been a little bit more dainty with an orange, but I just want to show you guys, hey, a little bit of how it would look. Actually, I kind of like that mixture too. Maybe some of my uh, bigger guys will have that. All right now that the. Uh, has dried so we can see all those cracks in there. Still a little, I don't think it's a little soft. This is right very good. Now we're gonna dry brush it. Actually, I'm going to wash it and give it a little more definition. That one we'll use Agrax Earth. After that, we will then dry brush it. I just gotta find my Agrax right there. Easily just pop the Agadark Earth shade open. And go on. Oh, my brush is a little stiff, so let's go inside real quick. There we go. Take that and then just dip it in. Get a good amount on there. Let it flow and see how it kind of. You don't see. So, see how that kind of gets into the cracks. There we go. Try to avoid the boots with this as best you can. 
It happens okay. But the idea is when we dry brush, that'll make at least the boots look dirty, as but still stay with the, you know, whatever terrain you're working on. All right. So all that's gonna seep inside. Now he's gotta let that dry, cause he can't dry brush on top of a, a shade, cause it look real bad. All right, so now that wash dried, that gives a little definition to that terrain. We're gonna first start with a dry brush of Tyler and Sand. It's real simple. You get to a good, uh, good dry size right there. Pop it open. Put some paint on there, and. Whoop. Spin that in circles, dry it off. There we go. Back to hand, and now lightly dry brush over the terrain. Try to go against the grain for the most part. And then to top it off, just to make it stand out a little bit more, do a little bit of a dry brush, a screaming skull. I also didn't clean off my dry brush, it doesn't work really well wet. And that gives a little bit of a transitional color thing going on to the dry brush. Back of my hand. And then... Dry brush. So that is a, I would almost say, parade-ready Clone Wars figure, Commander, or new clones. Uh, also, the upgrade is Clone Captain. And the last little bit that we're gonna add, I got mine from Ari Painter, but there are many different ones. Is these little bushes. I specifically for most of my uh, clones, I use the Wasteland Tufts. And it's gonna put that right there, push your finger down, and then like, kinda like move that bristles. And it just adds that little bit of flavor to it. So guys, here is the clone captain. All the steps to get that nice, clean look for the clones. And it didn't take that long. A lot of waiting periods between drying. But all in all, a quick process, especially for batch painting a bunch of clone units, which you usually intend to do. So I want to thank you all for letting me show you this. Hopefully this helps you out in painting your clones a little bit faster and a little bit with more character. Remember guys, it may be the Star Wars universe, but have fun with it. Makes like I said, this this project, even I haven't got to paint clones much, has been personal because it was a kind of a thing that like, you know, I've sparked the ideas from between me and my wife's brain. It's like it just made it more fun to paint and work with. So as always guys, like and subscribe. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And I hope to see you again later for more videos. Have a good night, y'all.